You'll remember from a previous lesson that a vector is a set of values of a particular data type. Here I have a vector of character strings, a, b, and c, and another b, and I'm going to create that vector here with my c combined function, and when I run that variable, it shows up on my console here, a, b, c, and b again. A factor is like a special type of vector that's used for categorical values. And to create a factor, you're going to use this factor function here and then pass in a vector. And so here's my vector v1. I'm going to pass that into my factor function and assign that to a new variable, f1. When I view my f1 variable, you'll notice that this comes out a little bit different than my vector. My vector came out with uh, just the quoted values a, b, c, b, and my factor comes out with those same values here, but then it has this sort of levels attribute on it, and that has the distinct values inside that vector. So there's clearly something different going on here, and one difference is that levels property, if I wanted to see, wanted to return what those levels were on my factor, I could call this levels function, and that'll return each of those levels as a vector of quoted strings. And when I look at what this vector actually is, this type of function will tell me what it is internally. I can see that this thing internally is an integer. And so what's happening here is a factor is internally an integer with levels assigned as an attribute that sort of maps the integers to the levels. So the level character value is stored sort of separately from the internally stored integer value. So when I called this factor function on that vector, what it actually did was replace each one of these character values with an integer and then pick up the unique character values and put them in to the levels attribute. You can kind of see this if you convert that factor to an integer, and I can do that with this as integer function, pass in my factor, and you can see what I get is now a vector of integers um, doing that thing that I just said, which is showing you the integer replacement values for each of those character values. And if you wanted to turn the factor back into a character string, you could do that with this as character function. And so what this has done is now converted that factor back to my original character vector. So you can kind of convert factors back and forth between integers and characters, and that's very convenient. You can also change the levels on a factor without changing the underlying values. And this can be useful at times. The way you do that is you call this levels function, pass in your factor. And this is sort of a weird syntax, but it's very distinctive of R, which is you wrap your variable in a function and then assign something to that function. So here I'm assigning a character vector with my new level values to that factor F1. And if I were to print then F1, what you can see is that I have my new levels assigned to each of those underlying integer values. The underlying integer values have not changed. It's only the display of the factor has changed. And one of the things that factors allow you to do, and I think the thing they're quite useful for, is ordering 
you can sort a factor because its underlying value is a numeric. You can sort a factor easier than a character string. So this order function here, I'm going to pass in my factor. And now you remember that this is a number. So this order function is typically going to work on a number. And what this is returning is actually the position of the ordered factor. And then I'm going to pass those positions into my subset brackets. And I'm going to be able to then order that factor by the underlying numeric values instead of the character strings. And then when I convert that factor to an integer, I can see that the underlying numbers have also been reordered. So a factor is a special type of vector that's an integer with level attributes assigned to each of those integer values. And this data structure is frequently used for categorical variables in R. And it's super useful when you want to sort things, especially when you're trying to sort something that's not alphabetical. And factors are very frequently used in our statistical functions that take categorical variables. Very often you need to convert them to factors first before you send them into the statistical function. And to get comfortable with factors, what you can do is obviously create some factors of data that you might find interesting. And you can try changing factor levels. You can practice sorting factors. This is um, quite a different data structure than vectors. It's in some ways harder to work with, but it is useful in some circumstances. So you should understand how this factor works.